Good evening and welcome to OPC Season 2. Once again, I'm Kevin Everett Walker. Joining with me this evening, Matt Pixie Carroll, as we're bringing you Week 4 Day 2 action. Three more matches tonight. We have got some pretty good matches as it is, but the thing that's been really exciting, I mean, the second round, Robin, the stage was set very cleanly for yeah. this round, Robin. A couple of ties that had to be resolved, a couple of kind of questions around the middle of the standings. Already we're getting the resolution of some of those questions and it's just thrown everything into chaos. Stuff like uh, the loss that Machi suffered last night to Mega Thunder, their entire story from here on out yeah. is going to be fighting to avoid relegations. But to top off the night, we are taking an Ardient versus Liberland Supreme. And we did talk about Liberland Supreme yesterday as well. We talked about the fact that they have now come up against another loss to Flashels. They're coming into the second round, Robin, 0-8 so far. And now they're going up against top dogs on the standings, Ardient. So this journey for them still does not get any easier. Not only that, they've also introduced a new player to the team. Um, unfortunately for the time, retired Hotate back to Japan, so I mean for this team, a lot of questions. How are Living Supreme going to move forward now? And we saw Ryan's first performance last night against Flash Wolves, which is honestly an equally steep challenge. And that's the thing, like you said, for this team, the questions are all about improving enough that they can feel kind of safe coming into relegations, do what to pick up whatever wins they can, not even just in terms of series wins, but like, for example, taking a map win tonight against Ardian would be a really huge deal for this team. We're going to have a few words now from both sides for the pre-match interview before we head in. Anamo representing Ardient and Pepper representing Liberland Supreme. Uh, so we've so, right now we played everyone. So we're going to be really interested in seeing how we can perform the second round, Robin, and really looking forward to what Liberland Supreme are going to do today as well. Oh, so you're saying we lost. And we learned a lot from that loss, and we're going to continue our efforts, continue learning, And that's the thing, like I said, we saw Ryan for the first time yesterday, and it was a tough matchup. And honestly, you have to be frank and say this team is looking a little bit rough around the edges because it's not actually just bringing in Ryan. There has been a bit of another change up as well. Yeah. Strictly speaking, Pepper has now taken the role that Hotate had and Ryan has actually come in to take Pepper's role as the main Tracer player. So there's not just this one player uh, swap out. It is effectively like having two substitutions in a lot of ways, at least in terms of the overall um, smoothness of the gameplay, I suppose is a good word for it. And that was pretty evident last night. And just to recap, of course, now uh, fielding a pepper, Jasper on the flakes, Darrington on tank, Keisuke on support with Selene also on support, and then new player Ryan is now there, Tracer main on offense. Now let's take a look at the other side as well because we want to reacquaint ourselves with the audience side. Current number one team in the standings, Republic on tank, Animo the support, and also Captain and Shot Caller, Jeff on support, DM on offense, Michelle on flex, and Erster on offense as well. Now this team has had an incredibly good run, so very much the opposite side of the tables against Liberland Supreme currently on 0 and 8. You have a team that's Ardient currently on 7 and 0. So uh, 21 and 1 is their map record. The only map they've lost so far is against Flashwells. And just to recap the entire standings as well, Flashwells after picking up yesterday's win, sitting at 7 and 1, Hong Kong Attitude beating Blank Esports and now at 5 and 3 in third place, Blank Esports in fourth the four and four record ahq in fifth at three and four mega thunder at sixth and three and five after picking up a win against marchi who are seventh at two and six and Liberland supreme in eighth still waiting to get that first win yeah so there's kind of something at play here and i touched on it a little bit before i'm not going to deviate too far from this matchup we're about to see but you can see in the middle of that pack there how movable those standings are and already some of the match records uh from yesterday have started to uh, solidify some things and also change others. That top four, especially the third and fourth place, are still very much in contention. But the reason that's kind of relevant still to this matchup, even though Liberland is probably not going to be able to break out, not even into playoffs, but probably break out of that bottom two, it's going to be a tough road for them to do that. Not only are they not really going to be able to do that, Ardian are probably not going to get shaken out of top yeah. four. But here's the thing, right? You ever heard of the concept of a blue shell? 
<laughs> and that's Please exactly, explain. Because that's exactly what Level and Supreme could actually do tonight. I don't like the term play spoiler, but actually Level and Supreme picking up a win here. First of all, it actually seriously would give them a boost to breaking out of that bottom two and not having to face relegations. And it would throw Ardian's own standing at unequivocal first place into a little bit more chaos. They would actually be in a situation where a couple more losses picked up could have them as low as third and fourth. That doesn't affect their ability to make playoffs, but it significantly affects the seeding. And that's actually a very real factor here. At no point should Ardian be resting on their laurels even though they are now going to be facing what is currently the bottom team in the standings. And I think for every team that stands true, every team needs to consider Level Supreme as a real threat because we talk about, you talk about uh, uh, playing spoiler here, every single team, as you can see on the match standings, it's fairly close in that middle ground pack. So anyone that does take a loss against Ardian, their ability to make that top four gets seriously shaken up. But let's take a look at which matches we have look forward to tonight. So of course, we're starting things off with Ardian against Level Supreme followed up with AHQ Esports Club against Flash Wolves and Mega Thunder finishing off against Hong Kong Attitude. So really all across the board, we've got some really interesting matchups tonight. Uh, even kicking it off with this Ardian Liberland one, we've kind of talked a bit about that, but of course AHQ versus Flash Wolves, first of all, is a little bit of a rematch for those two teams, uh, but also it's an opportunity for Flash Wolves to try and stay ahead of the curve. That is not a loss they want to pick up as much as AHQ are eager for revenge. And then the final one, Hong Kong Attitude, Mega Thunder, it's Hong Kong Attitude also trying to solidify their spot in the top four and Mega Thunder trying to pick up more wins so that they can break into it themselves. So there is a lot of stakes still at the top of the second round, Robin, and the standings on the whole are still extremely mobile. And like I said, that spot from third down to about sixth place that could go any way over these next couple of weeks before we hit playoffs. All right, let's now take, a, I guess, a little bit of a closer look at these teams and players. Now, I want to start things off once again talking about Ardian. So this is a team, we already know where they are in terms of the tournament. They're the top dogs. They are, they are the team to beat. Where have they gone wrong so far? And just quickly as well, Smurf will be subbing in for Republic tonight. So the second time we will be seeing Smurf. And this is probably also debatably the most comfortable time you can bring a Smurf. You're not really at risk of losing against a Liban Supreme just yet. So maybe now is the best time you bring in your sub. But either way, you want to look at this team and consider that their one loss so far, or rather one map loss, was to Flash Wolves. Otherwise, they've had a squeaky clean run through the entire first round robin. They want to come into round robin number two, and look, they want to do basically the exact same thing all over again. I believe that first place is definitely the goal for this team, and they're definitely showing it too. Yeah, and that's the thing, it should be the goal. And if you wanted to have a kind of micro goal, this is a team who could have the goal of going fully undefeated even in terms of map record but on the other side of that is of course going to be liberal and supreme now here's the interesting thing right Ardians, by sheer virtue of being top of the standings have a great big target on their backs every single team in this competition will be trying to figure out how to pull apart Ardian, how to pick at their weaknesses how to make them crumble but Liberland are also trying to gel back together now with these new members. So they have to be considering both of these things. And also the reality is actually gelling as a team for them in this matchup in particular is going to be far more important than trying to deeply analyze Ardians to be the first team to kind of I suppose, break them apart. It doesn't mean it's out of the question, but Liberland will have prepared for this matchup, but they would have prepared for it internally they would have been looking inward focusing on their own team dynamic so that they can have the best showing they can out of themselves yeah. they won't have done that extra little bit that most teams will normally be doing where they're really trying to beat specifically the team they're playing against that's not a discredit to them it's just that's where their priorities are at right and also think for you know on the other side of that coin for a team like Ardian who are sitting rather comfortably at the top this is a, a time for them to maybe go out and experiment we are on the current live patch mm -hmm. which includes the junk rate changes which includes the Arisa changes, the Roadhog changes and what have you. So now is maybe the best time considering that A, you've started the next round Robin now, B, you're going up against the current eighth place team right at the bottom of the standings in OPC season two. What better time to bring Ursa out on something like a Junkrat to put your sub player Smurf in, giving, giving him some stage, some tournament time. Um, and give the different strategies a go, really explore what this new patch could really bring to the table because we've already seen the likes of Hong Kong Attitude, the likes of Blank Esports, and even Limit Supreme now yeah. try other different strategies. Blank did the Bastion, Orissa, Zaya kind of strategy. You see uh, both Pepper from Limit Supreme and Hong Kong Attitude, Mui, they're picking up the Junkrat and doing some stuff there. 
Um, and then on the other uh, on the other side of the table, you had a team like Flashels who were quite content with continuing the exactly. I guess the play style and the compositions from the last patch, which was still sticking mostly to the Doomfist, really making it work there. So for a team like Ardian, um, it's their time to show their flexibility. How far can they go? Yeah. Or are they going to stick to their tried and true Tracer Genji kind of gameplay and kind of beat Liblet Supreme that way? Or are they going to do something different? Exactly. And actually, that's the question on my mind, uh, or almost above all else, is like you said, of the six teams we've seen so far since the new patch has come out, only one of them has stuck with the Doomfist in any significant fashion. That has been Flash Wolves, and they've done it to great effect. What that's instantly proved out of the gate. A lot of people are really shying away from Doomfist because he's lost the potential to just pick off the most squishy players. Yep. But he's still got all that same mobility, he's still got all the same utility, and he's still got all the same potential strength, right? He's still got a kit that is brimming with usefulness, even though it's a little bit trickier to one-shot. Flash Wolves have read that, they've understood that, and they're still maximizing it. Ardian, I feel, are a team that can equally do that. I'm curious to see if they actually will do that. And it is, of course, their map pick first with that home side. They're going to be taking us to Elios. Which is a rare pick because Ardian, so far, you look at all the matches they've had in the last round, Robin, five out of the seven matches were Lee Jung Tower. I think two of them were Nepal. And this time we're going to Ilios and it's going to be Ardian doing that first. So I'm expecting something they have specific in this map that they want to bring out here. This is now where that experimentation starts to get really important. And just to recap how the structure works, Ardian as the home side get map picks one, three, and five. That is the control, assault, and hybrid at the end. Liblet Supreme will be picking up the hybrid on the, as the second map and also the escort as the fourth map. And every team that picks a map also chooses the starting side. That is, by the way, if we get to a map four, because like we said, Ardians have only lost one map so far in this entire tournament. That is Nambani. absolutely huge. And we said they want to probably repeat that performance. Ideally, lose no matches in the second round, Robin. So it's on Liberland here to take maps off them, to hopefully take more than that off them if they can. But honestly, walking away from this with a map win or even two would be a huge success for them. Yeah, definitely agree with that. And you're coming in for a team like Liban Supreme as well. This needs to be a team that, look, they understand they're not favoured in this matchup. It's eighth place going up against the first place team. They need to, as previously mentioned, look to gel with their team, look to find that synergy as well. Pepper's moving into a different role. You have Ryan coming in as a brand new player into this team as well. Now is the time for a team like Liban Supreme to really get their stuff together and move on forward as a team that can work together extremely well. Elio's going to be the map pick. And this is interesting as well, I, if we do end up going to it, if we do end up on Ruins, I would be interested to see if we see Widowmaker specifically out of one or both of these teams. Of course, really looking forward to what Ardian in particular are going to be pulling out. We have seen a little bit of Pepper on, thumps, uh, on the Widowmaker before. That was specifically yesterday where I guess we looked for a little bit more out of this guy so far. Don't mind the graphics here. Liberty Supreme are on the red side, and Ardian are in fact on the blue side. Nothing too crazy out of the gate for either team yet. Yeah, we are, of course, seeing those Widowmakers, and this is the pressure on Pepper, really, to match Erster's Widowmaker. This has got a really wide hero pool so far, and Pepper is a player that needs to prove how wide his hero pool can be, because he spent the majority of this tournament only playing Tracer so far. Nothing too incredible out the gate just yet. Jasper's mech will be the first casualty of the fight, but the trade-in is actually there. Darrington probably a little bit too deep, and Pepper needs to be careful. Ooh, pokes his head out just that little bit extra, and that's kind of the turnaround there that Ardent were looking for. They only have a couple of members to put pressure on this point, actually, with Smurf down, but they're able to keep Michelle largely healed up, actually struggling a little bit on that front, and that's really their only way of taking the territory that exists on this point. Liberland are kind of respawning and flooding back in on it and getting more pressure on the point itself, but now losing Darrington. Good pick on Jeff, but it does actually look like, oh, hold on, never mind, D-making Michelle. That could swap it back in the favor of Liberland again. This is still kind of jostling for position, but it does seem that Liberland are finally going to cede this point and live, let it go over to Ardian. And right in the first fight as well, you could see that both the Widowmakers are trying to go for each other, but where Ardian really came ahead is their five-member squad took down Liberland Supreme's five-member squad. We had a couple moments there. Specifically, you got to look at Ryan. He was one that landed a pulse bomb kill that ended up taking down two from the Ardian side, but not enough. Jeff dies with EMP. 
That actually helps Jeff kind of a little bit because Ardian ended up winning without using EMP at all. That means they can now come in, use this EMP, get some big effect out of it. Infrasight already out from Ursa. That's actually going to help Jeff find good positioning for the EMP. Yeah, and unfortunately for Liberland, can't get Pepper's Infrasight up just yet. So it also means it's harder for them to spot out Jeff DM. Going to go in for the wraparound here, though, on the back side of them. Going to try and cut off the retreat as the EMP connects. Selene is already the first casualty, and the rest of the squad is having a really hard time it's pulling back from time. this fight. Yeah, it is turnaround time, though, because they haven't quite closed out just yet. But losing Darrington, who was not able to use the Primal Rage, could be what swings at Jasper, trying to at least create some space for the team to regroup. But they need to be able to do something with that space. Ryan missing with the Pulse Bomb and not really getting much pressure himself. DM is all over him, and this is continual closeout from Ardian. Even though they're only getting a couple of picks, and it's happening late in the fight, Libelant aren't getting any time on the point. And that was a 50-50 fight as well because for Jeff, he landed the EMP. You could see DM coming around from the flank, getting the damage from behind, but there wasn't a lot of kills post EMP. That being said, Liberland Supreme, they had a little bit of a turnaround time. As soon as the EMP went over, they had the opportunity to use their ultimates. A couple members didn't really get the chance to do that. They didn't really strike back, get any return kills. And once again, I didn't come out on top and they continue that progress. And already they've got the tools to close this one out really quick, smart. They've got the EMP that is going to go straight in. Oh, good, good count. Yeah, great catch on the transcendence there. Gonna keep leveling a little bit tidy for the time being, but Pepper already picked off, and that should be the go button for Ardian. Smurf does actually go down in the counter trade, and there is a very real window here, but no one's really answered DM on the backside of this just yet, and he's now going to ramp back in to get the pressure down on Kesuke and Jasper both. The DMEC coming out, Jeff closing out that one. And Liberlin just do not have the manpower here to be contesting this point. Overtime ticking down, Ardian 101. And I think for Liberlin Supreme as well, they had some interesting moments there. When you look at it from a macro standpoint, Ardian, they had some good overall plays that you expect out of them, such as the EMP coming down at an opportune time. But really, you're not getting the big cleanups that Ardian are known for. When an EMP comes down, Ardian get a full team white. That's the expectation you come to have about the team. Right now, you're just not really seeing that. On the other hand, Liberland Supreme, you kind of feel that they get given a couple of handouts, such as, cool, the EMP comes down. Oh, we didn't die. Also, this time an EMP comes down, but we use Transcendence early to make sure that we blocked out, to make sure that we're not going to lose any members. The big issue for Limit Supreme is that despite winning some of these small micro battles, they're not getting the kills, there's not enough damage, they're just not securing a lead to actually cap the point. Now, that's once again, kind of on them to answer back, but they're instantly going to change up here, wanting to get Pepper onto the Soldier. Not going to match Ersta's Genji here. And that's kind of the normal, this is the baseline composition for Living Supreme. I don't see Pepper as a Genji player. This is definitely Tracer Soldier, his comfort zone, and it's already showing. They're getting a good lead now, two members down already for Arden. You're looking for an entry from Ursa. He might not even find it. That's a really big set of pickups. Ursa does still find that entry, naturally, but he's going to have to convert a lot more. But he's got the pressure onto Pepper. He does go down in the counter trade, though, and that actually gives Liberland the manpower they've so far been lacking to get on the point. Doesn't matter right now that DM hasn't really been answered because Ardian as a whole can't really answer the pressure on the point. And by the way, good extra aggression from Limulant to close out on Animo and just get themselves more time to regroup. And Pippin did so well there. Despite going down himself, he makes sure he takes on Ursta with them. The rest of Limulant Supreme as well. Getting two early trades before Ardian can really do anything. Ardian are not a team that's going to back off either. They will fight you tooth and nail to the last man. That's exactly what they've done. But still, Limulant Supreme finding the early picks. Yeah. This is how they're going to get their way into the game. And now Ur Ardian for the first time, thinking, maybe not. Maybe we don't go for this. And this time, it's also Ryan on that wraparound here, trying to get the extra pressure down onto the frontliners here of Ardian. And they're doing a really good job. They haven't let DM just completely go off. They're kind of keeping a lid on him for now, but the pulse bomb did go wide, and they do need to apply the pressure in terms of kills. Ryan going down as well, a little unfortunate as Jasper gets demaked, and the pressure out of Ardian is just kind of unrelenting here. Liberlin, I think they were expecting that they would just kind of get proactivity, and we're going to use ultimate on their terms, but Ardian did not give them their freedom. And this was always going to be a difficult fight for Liberland Supreme because you are going up to the Ardian power spike now. You've had your turn, Liberland Supreme. You've used your ultimates. You should have come up on ultimates first. They did. Ardian now come back in. Smurf was the only one that actually used the ultimate. He primal rage Pepper right off the map, and no one else had to use it. This is now back to that ultimate economy, economy advantage that Ardian always get. They're so lean with the ultimates. They're so effective with ultimates. 
And you know, it's the situation where, you know, what if Selene had been able to get the Transcendence, but Ryan's solo kill onto DM, that's really huge for this team. And that's going to be the open out as well. Sound Barrier in as they instantly convert on the Smurf as well. Doing a great job with this Urster. Going to try and turn this one back around with the Dragon Blade. Has to be able to do so. But yeah, he is low. And once again, going down in a one for one with Pepper. It is Selene who gets the kill credit at the end of the day, but that's really great by Liberland to again answer the aggression that Ardina are putting on. And now it's their turn to put the pressure on themselves as Michelle forced to retreat. DM does get a good pick in there, and that may give a window to Ardian. There is also going to be a pause coming out, but as it stands, Liberland's still kind of in control of this fight, just haven't quite converted that into pressure on the point itself. The good thing is, Liberland are actually ahead. You look at the progress there, they're over 50%. You look at Ardian, they're still catching up, 40-something percent there. And Liberland Supreme won the first two fights rather comfortably. Selene has to be the one you talk about here, because consistently, he goes, those right clicks, we call them fireballs. They get the really good kills onto individual members. Ryan as well, he's winning some of the 1v1s against DM. You see his name come up on the kill feed. So, these guys individually on the Liblet Supreme side, they have been picking up the pace. And let's not forget Pepper as well. He takes down Ursta despite losing his own life, but he makes sure he gets at least a one-for-one -one trade. And so far, Ardian, they are striking back. They're striking back really big, using very little ultimates to do so. And now we're starting to see the power shift onto the other side because when ultimates were not a factor, Liblet Supreme looked like they were holding their own. Now that ultimates are a factor, it does appear that Ardian are coming big. On the whole, though, um, potential map results aside, Liberland, as it is, are already looking cleaner than yesterday, which was their debut match with Ryan. Just by the way, issue does seem to be with Pepper's PC. Not quite sure exactly what the nature of the problem is, but looks like it'll be a quick fix, so do just hold tight on that one. Well, like I was saying, Ryan came in for the first time yesterday, really tough matchup, had to play Flash Falls, and then like his very next match is against Ardian, which is even tougher. But this team, like I said, they needed to be looking internally to just gel together properly, be able to execute a little bit more cleanly with the roll swaps and the substitutions. And actually, I'd say for the most part, they've done that. It's not perfect, don't get me wrong, but compared to yesterday, this is leaps and bounds better. And this is kind of what we expect. Now we can start to really look at whether Ryan it will actually be just a step up in, on the whole as well. They did have to sub out Hotati for reasons unrelated to performance. So it's not like they've brought him in as a flat pound for pound replacement, but they've moved him into that Tracer role over Pepper. So obviously they value his Tracer. Now maybe we'll get a chance to see it shine. And the fact that Ryan has been taking down DM in some of these duels, you can't really, you, there's nothing to ball cat because no yeah. one simply takes down DM in these duels. He's been definitely showing up Thank on this Gandalf. one so far. And then you have a guy like Ursta as well as we now head into the unpause and we're getting right back into the game. ursta has been kind of slow this match so far. He hasn't had those big moments we're used to. And uh, Pepper is going to be getting back into this one as well. And that's a good pick by Jeff, actually, to get Jasper's mech. Once again, though, Liberland not quite able to put the pressure onto the point itself. And Michelle, very quick turnaround. He had actually just been forced off the point before that pause came out. Was able to just retreat and come back in. And already, Urs is looking to go deep. We have a situation now here for Ardian where they did spend a lot of ultimates to get control of this cap again. And as their progress now ticks over above what Liberland Supreme was sitting on, it's 69 now to 56. And Ardian. They're kind of down on ultimates, but they did bank up a lot earlier. This is what you get when you have a much, a very favorable fight where nothing really has to be spent here, and DM going on assassin mode. Ryan, great pick on the back line. Erster, though, trades one with Celine and DM, yeah. Kind of unopposed once again. Pepper is just struggling to get in position now. Has stopped going one for one in these trades. Jasper gets one on the back end, but he's sure to lose his life. Darrington's popped the ultimate, actually. And I can see the logic. I mean, they may not get a chance for another fight, and they do just want to try and get the pressure onto the point, but they still need to be able to actually regroup and respawn off the back of that. Now he's just back in, uh, you know, normal guerrilla mode, as it were. And Ardian now have the mileage. They've got the Transcendence out on the point. No one's even on the point from Liblin as Erster goes deep with the Dragon Blade. That's going to be a very smooth closeout for Ardian. Smooth, but not as smooth not as smooth as I believe that they maybe had expected. Now, for a team like Ardian, 100 to 0 would be the expectation for this team against Liberland Supreme. Certainly their own expectation. But ultimately, you do have to compliment Liberland Supreme's ability to hold their own in a lot of these fights, especially the opening fight. Selene, once again, the real member of the team that's able to find these pickouts when um, it's very difficult. And that fight right there, that uh, play of the game from Smurf's positioning from his point of view, that's kind of what swung it around. That was the turning point for Ardian where they said, okay, this is our power spike now. This is when we get our ultimates. This is when we come in and we take you down. On the whole, that's kind of exactly what we wanted to see out of both teams. 
in a sense. For Ardient, it is just the continuation of the really strong performances they've had. It's a two to zero. The first one was a hundred to zero shutout. The second one, they, once they'd capped it, held it all the way through until they had capped it out completely. But there was still Libelent winning the opening skirmish and holding onto the point for a while. But then also, of course, on the Libelent side, like I said, this team has stepped it up a little bit since yesterday. They do just seem to be looking a little bit smoother on the whole as a team unit. And the best part is you're not seeing any sort of mistakes or nervousness out of Ryan, who is the newest player. Mm -hmm. He is able to, once again, take it to DM in a 1v1 situation. He's able to get the pulse bomb sticks, gets kills as well. He's able to just find these openings along with his teammate, Selene, and Pepper on the back line holding up for himself so the individual parts of Libet Supreme appear to be there it looks like a big piece of a, a big puzzle where some of the pieces are definitely there now it's about putting them all together make it look good make sure the synergy is there make sure the coordination is all there and suddenly you have a very threatening team but can they get that in time the only thing I maybe would have liked to see there actually would have been Pepper on either Genji or Doomfist we haven't actually seen as Doomfist we don't really know how it stands right now but he was doing decently on the soldier he was generally going one for one but on the soldier you don't really want to go one for one you want to do a little bit more than that right now yes it means that erster therefore was generally going one for one which is also less than what you want to get out of a genji but i can't help but feel that maybe pepper on the genji could have been able to have a bit more impact in terms of getting on the back line given how much work ryan was doing clearly the freedom to dive successfully was there and i would assume the ability is there from pepper as well he is a really good player and he just wasn't quite able to make it work on the okay, soldier. So the soldier is fine, to be really fair. It's uh, not it's not the, like a bad idea, the, don't get me wrong. The the real issue is Genji's not within his hero pool. I do not believe it's within his hero pool. I do not believe that Doomfist is within his hero pool. His hero pool is strictly hit scan DPS as shown so far. Tracer, McCree, and Soldier. Mainly Tracer. He's now moving into Hotari's position where he now tries to go where he now goes on to the other picks, such as McCree and Soldier. So well, Tracer Genji, you you're not gonna see it out of this team. Not for the rest of the season. I firmly believe that. That's so unfortunate at, actually to say the, the least. At the most it is and it isn't, because Flash Wars can make it work with only Tracer and Soldier. They proved that, they won an entire season with that. There's nothing wrong with only running a Tracer and Soldier. You can also run only a Tracer and Genji. Ardian have proven that too. If you only want to run this composition, you can make it work. In fact, a lot of teams that currently are not doing very well in this competition are the ones that are trying to go too wide. They're the teams that are trying to bring out Arista and Bastion at the wrong time instead of finding one composition that actually works. You can't help but worry, though, that there may come a time when that slight lack of flexibility might hurt these folks. But this is, of course, the patch that they will be playing on for the majority of this tournament. And like you said, this is a viable enough thing. It is something they can get away with. And uh, I was not aware of that here in pool the issue on the side of Pepper. But at any rate, now on their own map pick, Level and Supreme taking us to King's Row. This is the very map they beat Flash Wolves on. So again, the precedent is here as much as they did fail to beat Flash Wolves last night on Escort. They have the ability and one yep. thing we actually do see them do quite successfully, this is how they were able to beat Flash Wolves on King's Row, is they're very good at breaking those extremely aggressive defenses. And we know that Ardient favor that defense as well. And let's remember the fact that yesterday in the Flash Wolves versus uh, Libet Supreme matchup on King's Row, Libet Supreme had some really good moments. They specifically the momentum play they have after capping A, moving through street space was extremely clean. They didn't really lose any fights there. But where Flash Wars really held them up was on C and at the start of C as well. They never really allowed Libet Supreme to get any further. That was mainly off the back of, um, well, obvi obviously off the back of really good plays by Flash Wars. Zonda consistently winning the McCree versus McCree duels and Libet Supreme. That's when they were going for the McCree and Tracer. So maybe they go back to that as well because you do have to have an answer for Erster's Genji if you're expecting them to play it. You do even have to have to have an answer for the strong dive compositions that Ardient like to play. But that is reliant on the fact that they will play in the first place. We don't know that. They could be experimenting wow. here. We could be seeing the Junkrat from Ardient. Double Junkrat traps. Could be seeing a Junkrat from both of these teams. I don't know Are those how. Those opposite teams. Yeah. Like, I don't know how that happened, but it did. And I can't there there's only no, one junk Yeah, because there right isn't... I do, I do not understand what's... This is a very complex situation. But it is <laughs> going to be Libelin choosing to attack first. They are one of the teams that uh, often do that. 
Jasper walks into a Junkrat trap, but uh, we'll actually get a bit of charge off it. Ardian are going to be running the Junkrat on the defense. So this will be interesting how they approach the situation because both teams are running somewhat slow compositions. Zarya is out for both sides. That kind of affects Libin Supreme negatively because you do want the Diva to soak up a lot of the Junkrat's junk damage. Ooh, Keisuke having to go sort of quick rescue made onto Jasper. And uh, unfortunately, Darrington getting picked. No counter trade either, so that respawn advantage doesn't quite help them. And Ardian already kind of on the prowl. Look at them moving as this very, very solid unit here. Great pick on the DM on the back line, though, by Pepper. And Jasper with this charge is looking to get aggressive to break the back line now that Darrington is back in. Ardian didn't get any kind of round. We are seeing a lot of energy on Jasper as well. They do still have that player advantage as DM makes his way back into the A point, but. Kills are coming in with uh, with Smurf going down. A lot of that frontline pressure disappears from Ardian. Yeah, that's the one for one, and a tempo res brings Darrington back anyway. They do lose Pepper. That is a really great turnaround, though, out of Michelle, able to get those kills through. Jasper still kind of keeping it down for a moment longer, and off the back of that, they get two thirds. Liberland can certainly walk away happy with that because that wasn't cheap and easy for Ardian. You still have to consider what went wrong there for Liberland Supreme because Jasper, still the in Graviton this. Surge was really good. In fact, they're still in this. Now Selene's committed in as well. Michelle goes down. <laughs> Falling apart. Jasper didn't back off. He had the charge. He had the shields up. He decided to stay in it. Only just going down at the end to the Junkrat tire. That is actually a saving grace for Ardian because these, these deaths have come very late, very staggered, and a little bit sloppy as well, plus the hero change ups. So taking that high charge and close ultimate off the table is. Like I said, bit of a saving grace, but this is also going to be a tough streets phase. Well, now Jasper's now already on 72%. It only felt like he used the Graviton Surge just very recently. But Probably again, because that was Michelle's Graviton you Surge. No, well, no, they both used the Graviton Surge. Well, there we go. Both players used the Graviton Surge, but you have to question what happened with Jasper's one, because his one should have been a lot more effective. There wasn't Smurf alive, there was no Reinhardt Shield, he was on 100 energy himself, and yet, Love and Supreme couldn't pick up the kills. They're going to have to find them now, though. Good heavens, would you look at the time. Oh, Michelle able to pop that defense matrix back up just in time. And Liberland were taking a little bit too long, waiting to get mileage out of the dead eye. Meanwhile, the rest of them were getting closed out on. That was a really important fight for Arnie because they came in with pretty much no ultimates. Liberland Supreme, they were stacked. Kayski with the resurrection as well. They needed to expect that Arnie were going to play aggressive here. If Kayski had stayed alive, gotten himself a big res, that would have been a big turnaround for Liberland Supreme as well. Also, Pepper probably needed to pick up something with the dead eye. Arnie just looked to ignore it. Ms. Graviton from Jasper to be very aware of Michelle's positioning. There was perhaps a window maybe to have uh, used the Deadeye to draw out the defense matrix, but in any case, that's not an option anymore. Oh, good good timing. connect, yeah, great timing indeed, but they need to get the closeout. The bio grenade going to keep most of the team alive, but they do get a couple of key closeouts there. Losing Pepper in among the mix, and that's a good tempo res out of case again to keep the one going. Liberland having the momentum on their side now here is really paying off for them. The payload is really not stopped at like for a significant length of time. This is actually quite a good attack out of Liberland on the whole. And that's extremely important as well. This is where Liberland Supreme has been most successful. You look at how they played this against Flash Wars. Streets was very good for them. A, they got st stopped up. C, they got stopped up. But this isn't where they normally get stopped up. Ardient, though, have something to say about that because they've been saving, they've been banking, and it's time to withdraw the ultimates. Yeah, exactly. It's time to uh, cash in on that compound interest. But the pressure is there. Great pick on the Smurf by Rion. They had to commit the two ultimates in here just to try and get something done. Trying to get Pep with the Deadeye. And he does close it out, but he's not going to get anything more. And the sound barrier is already being committed. But Libelin aren't getting trade kills of their own. And actually the ultimates, sorry, the respawns rather are closer for Ardians. And indeed the ultimates are still there too. Just going to be the route now coming off the back end of that from Ardient. We are still waiting for Limit Supreme to recharge those ultimates as well. Mind you, the Graviton Surge into the Riz was the big tool that Ardient, well, that really fell Ardient down. I mean, for Ardient now, they've used that time to sort of build themselves back up, get their team consolidated together. Ursa actually spent a long time hiding from Pepper's Deadeye, so that kind of zoned about well, but ultimately Pepper's still got a rather, Ursa's still got a big number of kills. A little bit supreme. They're not really coming out the back of that fight with anything positive to show wow. for. Certainly the one clip from DM is something to say about it. Yeah, it's honestly just going to mean Liberland have to back off, but they have to do so safely past DM, and he's going to make that as hard as possible for them, and they pick up Celine off the back end as well. Wow, going to close out on Darrington as well. They're going to take a mile from an inch here, and even Jasper is at risk of losing his life here. Finally gets Kazuke to heal him up, but that's a lot of time lost for Liberland. And these fast fights do not work well for Liberland Supreme at all. They need more time to build ultimates. Again, we have to go back to the Riz. We have to go back to the Graviton Surge. That's when Liberland Supreme really hit their stride. And for Ardian, these fast 
fast flights do work for them because they want more and more flights, more opportunities to get these kills because we know they can get these kills. And Limit Supreme, they had a pretty good run on B so far, but they are now running out of time. They're gonna get those ultimates up right about now, but early lose on Jasper. KZK may need a tempo res if they wanna stay in this fight, but they're split. That's a good belly res though, getting the three. No ultimates committed just yet out of Artie and actually the self-destruct, oh, that's a great one clip. Never mind the no ultimates comment there, but that's a Rest. very late grab, and unfortunately there's no one left to follow it up unless Ryan is able to nick a pulse bomb into the middle of it, but just no extra close out from Liberland. And great job by Arden to get three people down, commit ultimates, have a huge res come out, and then just kill those same people again. Well, the grab does come out, and Jasper says what no better time to change up than now. I didn't see that the composition was really an issue for this team. If anything, you were going to change case to get off the mercy. But here we go. Grab was a little bit wasted. Limit Supreme, one more opportunity. They're not going to come in with anything really to use. Oh, that's Selene a great stick. Limit. That is absolutely massive. An instant conversion out of Erster and DM as well. Darriton going to be uh, the last of his teammates to just... Oh, this is so unfortunate for Liblin, really lacking in time. Rion may not even get out. This is really disastrous now for Liblin. They do not have the time to fully regroup. They just have to book it for the point. And Arian's not going to let them do it because Urst is ready to drag and blade again. They should be cutting off the head right now of Liblin Supreme. Not even allow them to get close to this card. Expect Arian to play very aggressively. Indeed, there are very few ultimates available for both teams, but honestly, Earth's Dragon Blade could be the one. Indeed, should be the one that seals the deal, as they're able to keep Michelle's mech alive. Good pressure on DM, but no conversion. And Liberland, they do at least get to the payload, but that's the nano boost. No blade to follow it up just yet, but now the blade going to come out as the sound barrier starts to run out, and there is uh, no transcendence there anymore from Celine. Was already used. That's Ardian already picking up a quick two, going to close in for another one, and then all the rest going to follow the team to the grave on the side of Liblin. Ardian's very, very strong hold. Once again, Liblin Supreme get roughly held up, or at least soon to be held up at uh, kind of the same place they get held up against most teams on Kings Road. Yes, they did beat Flash Wars that one time, and this is where they won against Flash Wars because uh, flipping the script a little bit, they managed to hold Flash Wars in the street section, but now when they fight up against Flash Wars, when they go up against Ardian, they do not really get past the streets very much. Even capping the streets against Flash Wars, they don't really push it any further. So, for Ardian, a very comfortable way to defend this, but you do have to question the start for Ardian. What went wrong on A, the Junkrat composition, not really working for this team, not yet. Yeah, unfortunately so. On the other hand, Liberland found a lot of success out of running the Zarya, and I'm not saying they needed to stick on it, not by any measure. It wasn't working at a point, and they did need to change off. Uh, the quick fights, like you said, weren't favoring them. They wanted to stay in it long, get the charge up on the Graviton, uh, and indeed just the energy for the damage output from the Zarya. But it's almost a shame, actually, that they weren't able to preserve some of their momentum further on into the streets phase. But then again, credit to Ardian for actually taking them down and stopping that momentum up and never letting them get it back. And I think for Liberty Supreme as well, they had the ability to continue that fight. They had the ability to really cap it out all the way. So Jasper, he has to be the hero of Camp A. He was the one that stayed alive, 100 energy, great Graviton Surge, despite not having the damage follow from either himself or his team. But he, he stayed alive. Well, we called this yeah. one out. It was, it was surprising that he never backed out. It was surprising that he managed to stay alive and do as much as he did. But he did do that, and he got them A. Now, when you get into Street so they still did a pretty good job. Graviton Resurrection, once again, was how they won their next fight. But towards the end there, Kekski, he got the value rates. Three came up. They got one traded back. They lost one. And then Jasper, he grabbed as he was dying, and everything started to fall apart. And it was a bit of an unfortunate way to go. That point A was pretty heroic as well. He was like about one versus four, and then managed to not only stay alive, but get two kills right as his team was rejoining. Absolutely incredible. But like you said, oh. here on the defense, that's the one you want to pick if you're Pepper, happy to get that extra ult charge out the gate. That's ridiculous because Ursa did the exact same trap that caught someone for Liberty Supreme. You would think that Arty would learn from that. You would think that they wouldn't fall to their own tricks. How does the trap catch the floating robot, though? That's what I want to know. It's a... It's got springs, so the trap, like, jumps up and it jumps up. It, like, yeah. senses, like, there is an Omnic floating above me. I, I need a clamp down shot. But this yeah. is a good wraparound now by Earth. That means Liberland are going to have to move off the point unless they get pincered. 
but the move around has been completed. They have yet to close out any kills either side just yet, but the third nearly there for Ardian. So Limbaland need to choose now whether they want to fight this out or seed that third. Gonna have to seed the third now, but they've been able to go in for the fight. Ryan going one for one with Smurf, but now it's DM getting aggressive on the back line. And once again, largely unanswered here, not seeing the same pressure from the flankers, given that Ryan is on this McCree instead of the Tracer, and it shows it. I, uh, what? <laughs> uh, that is, uh, That's a celebration pulse prop from DM. And maybe, I, I, maybe, he got, he got spooked, thought it was the enemy, Winston. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe cause for celebration here. Not too soon, though, because Limit Supreme do respawn. But Ardian, they played that A cap extremely well. Limit Supreme lost all positioning. Where Junkrat really, um, where he really shines is in narrow spaces, forcing Ardian into corridors. But Ardian, they knew better. They played in the open, they surrounded Limit Supreme, and they got the flanks going. And when that happens, Limit Supreme on the Junkrat, you don't have the angles to Work with anymore. Saving Grace here for Liblin is the snowball isn't quite there from Ardian. They're about to get some ultimates up, so they could start a high momentum street space, but Liblin have a window to take a successful fight here. They need to make something happen with it. But already Kasuke down, and the few ultimates Ardian had, they're gonna leverage to get the kills here as they pull out both the sound barrier and the transcendence, allowing Earth to do absolutely go off once again. And Liblin Supreme had a good moment there because they got the forward spawns, they didn't spawn where C was because A. Uh, they all got wiped at roughly around the same time on A. They all respawned together where they would had they still been defending A. So for Limit Supreme, had the ability to get a really close hold. Ardian, though, they saw it coming. They got a really good attack onto Limit Supreme, and yet again, we're nearly capped out, to be honest. Yeah, Limit have to put on the pressure now. They've got the grab to do it, but they've got to actually get on the payload. They get zoned off for a moment by the Pulse Bomb. No one's on it! Oh, barely in the nick of time, Darrington gets in. That's the dead eye out, but Smurf's bubble is going to stop that one up. Graviton gets eaten by Michelle. That is absolutely massive, and it's an uphill battle for Liblin as the incline gets steeper and steeper with Ursa going off with the Dragon Blade. And honestly, that one catch from Michelle probably spun the fight right there and then. Had that grab connected, there was a very real opportunity for Liberland to not just get that first hold, but truly dig in their heels. Play of the game to Erster and, you know, which one? <laughs> right, yeah, which one is, I guess, pretty apt for this team. And you have to really look at and highlight that play from Michelle because for all the other times the Graviton Surge did come down, that was Jasper outplaying Michelle, especially the one in the middle of the streets around the pub where he waited for the Matrix to cool down. As soon as Michelle retracted it, the out came the Graviton Surge and then the rest to follow sometime after that as well. So Graviton Surge was one of the big tools that so far Limit Supreme have found a lot of success with, but we get a situation where either Graviton Surge is used post-death, posthumously, or in a situation when it gets eaten up by Michelle, then suddenly not so good for Lebanon Supreme. And I do also just have to quickly correct myself because Pepper did pick up the Doomfist. However, he doesn't play the projectiles to my knowledge, so you're not going to see a Genji. Yeah, well, I, I, I've got some soap on hand so we can wash your mouth out during a break or something, that's fine. But, uh, I mean, to go back to the Zarya thing, to be honest, that is just one of the risks with the Diva. You've got to get the timing right on that. But on the whole, it was good most of the time from Liblin, but not quite there when it counted. And because of that, Ardian are going to pick up the second win of the series on Hybrid. And then they're going to be able to take it to Assault as well with their map pick. So already on track to make that 3-0. And honestly, the pressure only mounts now for Liblin. They've yet to pick up a single win on Assault. They have at least one control maps and hybrid maps in the past. Limit Supreme as well now, only one map left to go for this team, potentially for Ardian as well. So, I mean, there have been some good moments for Limit Supreme. They've been winning some fights, some fights very convincingly as well. Yeah. You only have to look at, uh, you have to look at well for that with some really good fights there where they really open up with double kills, 45%. In fact, they got over 50% off of one uh, one good momentum spree, essentially, of a run of kills that really yeah. stopped up Ardian. You gotta look at the success of capping A very quickly, very effectively, as well on King's Road. Jasper was probably the big member of that. Going on, on streets as well. Really good moments from all the members, but um, ultimately, you have to continue these good moments. It can't just be sort of sporadically here or there. You gotta yeah. be consistent because Ardian, they are consistent. Exactly, and I will actually say, they're not actually looking as consistent as they normally do. They're still way more consistent than Liberland. That's what's counting here. But I do want to touch on something here with Ardian, and that is, I'll be frank in saying, they don't actually look as clean with Smurf as they do with Republic. We are actually seeing DM and Erster both die uh, when they're going on the dive, whereas when they have 
um, Republicans dead, they just seem to get away with it, right? Sometimes on like 5 HP, but they are able to dive with impunity. Taking a look at some replays though, this is where they were able to dive pretty successfully. And the pressure was just really great. This is Kesuke's 3K. Nice timing on that. And the invincibility frames do wonders for him, but the turnaround is instant out of Ardian because they actually still had ultimates. And unfortunately for Liberlin, they weren't in a great position to use their own. That was that uh, Graviton Surge you were talking about. And Honestly, at best, it could have only caught one member there as well. So, a bit unfortunate. He was going to swap off anyway, so it's sort of like, well, I might as well yeah. use it. But you do wish they could have got more mileage well, out of it, given how much mileage they got out you, of it before. You do have to look at it. What was the symptom there? Was it the fact that you used the Graviton Surge and you said, well, now I might as well swap off? Or were you actually planning yeah. to swap off in the first place? Because I would argue it's better to have saved the ultimate, not have swapped off and stayed on the Zaya. Because you have the Graviton Surge, you are about to close out the game in the, in the last moments into overtime, why throw out one of the most impactful ultimates in the game to then swap, swap on the Diva, which by the way, doesn't really help you that much against the Tracer Genji. Yeah, it helps against the Tracer, but actually a Zaya composition, uh, using the Zaya instead of um, using Zaya instead of Diva in that composition right then would have helped a lot more against Ursa, who has been a much bigger problem than Diem. And you gotta look at the Genji here, and the Zaya does well against the Genji, the Diva does not. I also wanna give some credit to Ursa as well, against specifically the McCree. We still saw some decent McCree play in general out of Pepper, but Ursa did a really great job of balancing that matchup. It is actually, I mean, in general, Genji is very technical in diving these DPSs. It's just a given, right? And I mean, we saw that when he was diving Pepper or when he was on the Soldier on Elios, but the McCree is really high risk because if that flashbang does connect or if you're in the wrong position when the Dead Eye comes out, you can you can just die. You can just die with no opportunity to one to one for one. But he also really had to be getting on top of Pepper constantly, and he did so very well. He wasn't just going all out. He was very restrained, very reserved, and it totally paid off as well. He really balanced that finely. And I think both DPSs from Ardian did that quite well against uh, Pepper specifically, because you never saw those big flashbang headshot moments that a lot of McCrees have on the table. You have a lot of moments where Mui, a player from Hong Kong Attitude, who plays the McCree, gets a lot of those types of yeah. kills, but against a team like Ardigan, Ursa and Diem, they know how to pick their moments properly, they know how to make uh, really good decisions in the middle of the game, specifically in team fights to keep themselves secure. If anyone was killing Diem, it was probably Ryan, not so much in Kings Row, a lot more on, on yeah. Ilios, and that's probably another thing you have to look at is, it didn't feel like Ryan had the same impact on Kings Row as he had on Ilios at the same time though, Jasper picked up big time, so despite Ryan kind of not having that, Jasper had it and then some, and that's kind of where they found some success. Exactly, and the other side of that coin, of course, is honestly, I think part of that on Elios with DM getting solo killed a few times, not to discredit Ryan, he's played phenomenally, but that does just seem to be one of those slight, um, slightly less clean things with this Ardian squad yep. running Smurf instead of Republic. You can't help but feel that he probably wouldn't have died in some of those situations with the support of Republic. Well, we'll have to find out exactly how Ardian and Supreme do as we continue this matchup between the two teams. Map number three comes up very soon, so we'll see you right after this break.
Welcome back once again to OPC Season 2 as we're about to head into Map 3 now of the series that Liblet Supreme taking on Ardian and so far 2 and 0 in the standings. I mean, let's be honest, this is absolutely not unsurprising. We did say at the top of this matchup that, uh, you know, Ardian certainly couldn't sleep on this kind of thing. Uh, Liblin, they're still eager to pick up wins, sure, but this probably wasn't going to be the match we did. We talked pretty frankly about where these two teams are, talked about the possibilities, but, I mean, the reality still was anything other than a 3-0 would have been a fringe case. It'd be more likely than, like, this totally unprecedented, um, I guess I'll go back to the term blue shell kind of phenomenon. Uh, but yeah, 3-0 is what Ardian and Oren track to do. And the thing I want to touch back on again is Liberland have absolutely no record. And this includes relegations, by the way, promotion and relegations. They have no record of winning assault. They have one map win in this entire season two so far, and that was on escort. So even within the season, they have no record of winning on control. They do have that in promotion relegation. Assault, on the other hand, and that's what Ardian is going to be picking as well. Like, it's it's really about as uphill as it could possibly get right now for Liberland Supreme. And it is going to be Horizon Lunar Colony that Ardian are going to pick up. Yeah, so perhaps more opportunity for Junkrat shenanigans. We saw a lot of that from the Flashwall side of things specifically. Zonda was running this on Horizon Lunar Colony. It was working quite well for him. He knew exactly what he was doing on that. Um, and you do have to look back at that series because that was also versus Liberty Supreme. So for a team like the Liberty Supreme, you have to come up against, I would say, somewhat very similar things that have been run against you this round, Robin. Yeah, it's it, look, it's a tough situation no matter how you slice it. The one thing I will say about Liberlin is they do seem to perform fairly well on Horizon Lunar Colony. Part of that was with Hotate, who at the time was playing the Doomfist as well. And now, of course, the two factors are no Hotate, also Doomfist changes. Doomfist still very much a viable option, and I do expect him to be a possibility for teams on Horizon Lunar Colony, but whether Liberland want to opt into it is a bit of a different story. What they will opt into, though, is honestly a mystery. And the interesting thing is, from the post-match interview that Bacon Jack gave uh, from last night's match, is he strongly believes that Junkrat is a big counter to Doomfist right now. And that actually part of the reason Doomfist isn't run is not so much the rocket punch nerf on the hitbox, but rather that Junkrat exists. And especially maps like this where there's a high likelihood of seeing a Junkrat specifically on the defense, you're less likely to want to run that Doomfist. Look at that beautiful blue marble. Yeah. Is, uh, that's it. That's what that's, a place to uh, live. That's all the human life. What a right place there. To, except for the human life on except for, Lunar well, Horizon. Because no, they're, they're all dead. All of them? Yeah, that was the whole point. It's like the gorillas all like rose up and killed all the people. It was pretty gnarly. What, what about the people? What about the people that are about to have a 6v6? Doors? Like, do they always open and close? On command. I've never actually seen them like open or close. I've seen them like a little bit of the way open and I just assumed they've always been like that. I don't know, I've never really thought about it. This is... One of those hot tub thoughts again. <laughs> Be careful with definitely, those. Definitely dangerous. not a hot tub thought. I mean, it's just a thing I saw on the screen just then. I'm not currently in a hot tub. I wouldn't mind being in a hot tub though right now, actually. That would be pretty top notch. Imagine that, right? Getting to cast Overwatch from a hot tub. Join me. And people will be yeah, like, be pruned by the yeah, end. People, be be like, people will be like, end. Pixie, what do you do? It's like, well, I sit in hot tubs and I talk about video games. You're just, you're well, completely dehydrated <laughs> and, and raisin by That would actually, end. yeah, that would actually be really difficult to cast from. But at any rate, this is going to be Liberland Supreme on the attack first. So Ardian unsurprisingly opting into the defense. And also opting into a Doomfist here. Liberland, this is very different. Ryan going to be on the Zarya and they're running triple tank. We'll have to see if the rocket punch nerfs really impact Ursta or not because he has found a lot of success so far. But Ryan straight away going down to Ursta. Liberland, like this is, it's like time capsule team comp, right? They've, they've, this is, correct me if I'm wrong, basically the Beyblade days. Uh, yeah, more or less, it's very close to that. I think, uh, you know, pretty much. We're not quite there yet. I would kind of assume, or rather, I would suggest that if you're Limit Supreme right now, you almost want to run the Doomfist over the Reaper anyway, because right now, Doomfist does feel a little bit more like a better Reaper in a lot of regards. Where Reaper is better is when you get in a situation against Sombra, you're much more resilient against EMP, whereas Doomfist gets really shut down by the EMP. But in all other regards, I think what Doomfist really brings to the table is just what, what Reaper can bring to the table, but better. And currently, yeah, I mean, they are obviously wanting to take advantage of some of the other aspects of his kit, and we're maybe predicting something like a Sombra, unlikely as that may be. 
It's really hard to say, but they've stuck with it for now, and that's what's going to count here. KCK able to get onto the point with his team. But now here comes the collapse in from Ardian. Meteor Strike, this could catch out just about anyone, and he slam dunks right into the limit of the team that's already been broken apart by a Pulse Bomb. Yeah. And this is unfortunate for Liberal. They got onto the point, sure, but they hadn't got any kills in the maneuver. They hadn't really done anything. And that looked like a bunch of kill steals from Diem as well as Erster wanted to land onto everybody. Diem is just like, nope, those are my kills yeah. first of all. And not a single trade going from Liberal Supreme onto Ardian. That was completely one-sided. A six-kill sweep from Ardian, and now the other ultimates come online as well. Does this just doesn't really get easier until Living Supreme can really hit the stride and get themselves a Graviton Surge to open things up with. And these are very slow charging ultimates out of Liberland as well. And already with no ultimates committed, Ardian picking up both of the supports. This is really rough for Liberland and still no counter trades either. On the cusp of getting Michelle or Smurf, but they can't really follow up because they're not getting the pressure on the healers who are just topping off these tanks constantly. Yeah. And the other thing is, Liberland Supreme are spending ultimates. You did see a Primal Rage come out of um, Dart. No, actually, I'm not sure if you saw that, but you saw, you did see the Nano Boost come out of Selene. You saw Liberland Supreme really trying to commit to some of these fights. And for Ardian, they don't have to use anything. They completely save there. They completely weather that storm. And Ardian's really tight. Now back on almost six ultimates. Back on that Christmas tree. And Liberland Supreme, yes, they're going to get the Graviton Search finally, but you need to get a full team wipe here, and it will be difficult to achieve. Liberland using those ultimates was actually really too their detriment absolutely massive imagine if you will a nano boost i mean to go back to the full beyblade meta right on pepper here as he gets the death blossom available they have the opportunity to go now because that's the grab in and it does connect a lot of health bars though on the side of Ardian. yeah where is the death blossom where is pepper in general because he just doesn't seem to be dishing up the damage in this fight it is hard to do so through that sound barrier but the retreat has now been able to come out out of Ardian, and pepper is still unable to follow up now Ardian just regrouping animo does go down but again pepper's now dead they can't exert this extra pressure, and he was the only ultimate they had available. That felt like the wombo combo they've been banking for, and they just completely whiffed it. And the worst part is they're not going to have another opportunity to wombo combo again. If you're going to use a Graviton Surge, you're going to run a Reaper as well. You're expected to get in there with a Death Blossom. That was going to be your way into this game. You also had a Nano Boost. Why was, I mean, obviously the Nano Boost was used previously, but the combo should have been Graviton Surge into a Nano Boost of Death Blossom. That would have been the full team wipe. Ardian would not have survived against that. Sort of Michelle doing something of a miracle and just eating the entire thing up from the correct angle. For, but for Liberty Supreme, 10 seconds left to go, only a Death Blossom to come out. This is too hard. False bomb gonna connect, and already the converts are there. Liberland are just kind of walking into these. Honestly, it's like Ardient are uh, speedrunning Horizon Lunar Colony, like the Liberland. Yeah, like the Liberland percent category. Like that's that's what this looks like right now. It's more like uh, it's it's Horizon Lunar Colony survival, and they just yeah, they're just surviving with horde flying survival colors. It, it's, yeah, yeah. It's horde survival mode, and the horde just kind of runs itself out. And yeah, you're like, well, top well, score. Well, that's it, guys. Uh, it's like like when wildebeest stampede, and like some of them just like fall down and they they get trampled. They don't get ever get back up. Like like the horde actually just tramples itself. That's the dream. That got if, if really, you're ever, if you're really ever in, dark, actually. And to to bring it into I guess a more cheerful arena which this is kind of ironic because it's not really cheerful but the zombie horde look if that would be that would be the dream that would be exactly how you want to <laughs> yeah. handle a zombie you, if, horde. yeah if there was a zombie horde you're right you would prefer for the zombie horde to wipe each other out like like i would hope that the zombies like develop like i don't know like like tribal politics and they just get <laughs> absorbed by infighting like if most of society is zombies then shouldn't zombies kind of have a bit of a fledgling society you know they, they, like, Sounds like, like I am legend. Yeah, exactly, exactly that, right? Because like you'd be like, man, I really don't trust those other zombies from over in the valley. Like, <laughs> they're they're weird folk over there. Like, did you know they don't eat the brain first? That's weird. Like, <laughs> zombies getting prejudiced against one another. <laughs> That's how you know they're still human on the inside. Anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Back into <laughs> back the on, very yeah, difficult away task. From, away from zombies into the much more real prospect of a base on the moon. Yeah. If it's if it's possible in James Bond movie, it's possible here. So, once again, it's got to be Pepper. I assume anyway. Back onto the junk rat. Does does someone, namely, uh, does Jeff get caught in the trap again? Because that's, I don't know. <laughs> that's that was a bit of a blunder in Kings Road. Not enough of a blunder to stop Arion. But it was entertaining. That's the uh, real question. Not going to happen, though. They walk out the other base gate. Bamboozled. 
And that is also going to be a Widowmaker out of DM with the Mercy in pocket as well. So body shots will be kill shots. And this is where it's really, it's a really good composition specifically against the Junkrat. You don't have to fight into the spam, you snipe him out. One really good shot powered by your Mercy as well. That's how you're going to get into this. But Pepper, good angle so far. He's making sure he's not going to be in line of sight. Or I'm wrong. As you yep. say that, he gets DM has, shot. Well, DM's like, oh, okay, he got. Oh, side. wow. He got one kill on Jeff in return. But DM, three headshots in a row. This is absolutely nuts. And already, Ardian are on the cusp of breaking the point. Wyon is going to go in for a bit of token defense. But honestly, this is not looking good here. Even as DM did get picked, Liberland are getting some respawns in, though. And actually, Ardian did take a while to get onto the point itself, but now they're on in earnest. Dowerton going down. Where are these members of Liberal and Supreme to get the kills in to really take it to Ardian? Are they just going to let them have this point? Smurf seems to think so as he picks up. Now That's his four. fourth kill of the fight. Five. Five, come on. Make it the Hexer. Not quite going to get the last one, but they are going to complete a fantastic speed run of Horizon Lula Colony. And Diem, wow, what a player, just getting the triple headshots in a row, and the thing about that and, was... And then Smurf was like, hold my beer. The thing about <laughs> that was, you look at a guy like, uh, like, uh, like Pepper on top, and you're thinking he's safe. I thought he was safe. Just like me, he made that mistake. He thought he was too safe as well. Then the headshots decided to come in, and it was all over. And this was that play of the game where, like, DM, like killed two of the people that would have been under the meteor strike like like you said if you're earth you'd be like oh really man i had that like come on but you know what my big takeaway from that matchup actually had to be i now really want to see a james bond film with zombies i uh, <laughs> well <laughs> but send what, in, <laughs> sending your email to eon films and maybe they'll hear you up but uh, yeah good luck with that one certainly you'll need a lot of luck much like limit supreme now in the rest of the opc season two Round Robin number two as well. Still get to pick up their first map one. So this is now the time for Liberty Supreme to once again address the situation that they are in. However, the silver lining is that they have looked to have improved, at least in the series, getting some really good fight wins on both um, Ilios and King's Row. Horizon Lunar Colony, unfortunately, they didn't find that level of success on this map, but on the other two, there were some moments. Yeah, and that actually, you're completely correct, is the takeaway for Level and Supreme here. But the overall takeaway in terms of the game itself is, of course, going to be Ardient will complete the 3 0. Like we said, absolutely not unsurprising. That was the previous performance. Nothing's really changed for Ardient on the whole. Things have changed for Liberland, and they are first trying to return to form and then push beyond that form. The pressure is really on for them now, but Ardian are just looking more and more secure in that number one spot. Not even in counting the fact that they're going to almost guaranteed to make playoffs at this point with every win they pick up. Let's take a look at some replays now from Horizon Lunar Colony. Oh, this is going to be the opening fight now, and of course you look at the side of Liberty Supreme, they're running the Reaper, they're running into the Zyre as well. Immediately Ryan goes down to Ursus, so they're not complacent here. You look at the Ardian side, they're not going to let this big team fighting, brawling type of composition, get into position that they want, which is important because uh, Limit Supreme's game plan here is to get on the cap itself. Suddenly, if you're Ardian and you're too slow, you're fighting into a Limit Supreme team already sitting on that cap, already waiting for you. That's when Zion's gonna shine. That's when the, that's when the Reaper's gonna shine as well. But Ardian, once again, just reading what the game plan is and taking the part. And there was a really unfortunate moment there for Liberal when they'd lost Jasper. They could have moved on to the point and they certainly were doing that, but actually, Doing that would have meant Jasper would probably never be able to regroup with the team because you just have these people on the point and then like six whole people between them. Ardian would be able to collapse anyway with the numerical advantage. Dariton read that and he went, okay, if we want to have a shot in this fight particularly, we do kind of need to get aggressive. So he went in for a dive and there wasn't really a follow-up. So it just seems like there was a bit of a missed connection with the team on the whole there where some were still moving for the point. Some kind of went in for a dive, and that ended up being the extra kills that made it a landslide victory for Ardians. Absolutely, and Liberal Supreme spent much of that attack as well, just building towards that one-bow combo, which ultimately ended up not being successful yeah. because they just kind of misfired that they didn't really combine it properly. You didn't see the Graviton into the Death Blossom. Nano Boost was already off the table because they used it on the previous fight to kind of no effect, just trying to find yeah. any sort of opening, but not really finding the the picks that they wanted to. And uh, for Ardian. Their defense was so good, was so ironclad, they were able to win the majority of the fights, six and zero, didn't lose a single member on their side. Generally speaking, yeah. There were a couple of times some counter trades did come in, but I mean, you've got the respawns anyway. I mean, if you're winning the fight, of course you're gonna have time for that member to rejoin you. The one other time we actually saw a counter kill coming in, interestingly, was DM dying immediately after getting three headshots in a row. Look, credit to Liberland for doing so, but 
by that point, it's kind of too late. Like he's already, he's already gone for, you know, like a three yeah. for one trade there if you're looking at the pound to pound score. And he's not even the guy that's going to be going for the objective anyway. And is going to be DM picking up player of the game as well. Specifically for the Tracer, which I think is fair enough given that we uh, mostly saw him on Tracer. But we did also see Widowmaker earlier on. That was on, Rooster, uh, though. On, was, you, actually, no, you're completely right. So it wasn't even his Tracer. Well, we saw two Tracers for two players. But honestly, I, I can't, can't credit DM's Widowmaker enough on Horizon Lunar Colony. Like, sure, it's that real 1% kind of play, but three headshots in a row to basically secure what was the map winning fight. That's nothing to be balked at, even though Smurf got like a 5k immediately after. And it was a difficult three headshots because it wasn't like he had the open angles where he normally is. To get that angle into Pepper to make that shot, he has to put himself a lot in, in a lot more danger, which is why he died in the first place. He died because he moved forward, because he was looking for better angles, very aggressive angles. He did get punished for it, but not before he already takes on half of the Olympic Supreme Squad. He kind of yeah. said it, by the time he kill got killed, it's like, oh, well, what you really stopped there was DM just killing six members. I wonder if anyone's like in game accidentally recreated that cinematic with Widowmaker where like you've lined up a shot on a tracer who recalls and then they expose a Zenyatta and Zenyatta dies. Somewhere, I know it's not Zenyatta somewhere Zenyatta. in the world. Yeah, I know it's not Zenyatta in the cinematic, by the way. Like, and please, it has to be please don't get angry, Twitch. But like, I mean, Mondata's already dead. You can't kill him twice. Zenyatta's well, in the you game. You can shoot a statue on King's Road. I, actually, that's a good point. I mean, I, that's a little so bit less not? impressive though. To like, line up the shot on Tracer, she blinks away. It's like, oh, I hit a statue instead. Silly me. It's, it's not hard. Vandalism in King's Road. Like, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a French sniper who has crossed the British Channel to be a vandal. <laughs> I'm not I'm not actually here to be a contract assassin. No, I'm here to muck up some statues with my gun. All right, now we're about to head into the post-match interview with audience. Get some of their thoughts. Overwatch Pacific Championship. And we do just have a bit of a delay. There we go, uh, getting the players onto the stage. So it's going to be with Erster. Hey, hello. Can you help me to do a so I am Erster from Team Audient. We have a first question to ask about the new patch. So we've had a new patch. From what kind of changes have you made in your team? Well, we have a new patch. We've got a new patch. We've got a new patch. We've got a new patch. Laja meta buda dolce meta itu sangat kita mune. Aji chongkresi banyak cuaca jadi tracer ga hayang mengci amni sang. Soi ga dolce meta nak kesus susu susu kat. Dolce meta nak kesus susu susu kat. So nothing really changed too much. So I feel like you know the one big change is now experimenting with ch with junk rep, but otherwise still sticking to a lot of tracer stuff. So we're in the world champ map. We've seen that he's used the Doom Dogs. So you're still using Doom Dogs. It feels like you're still performing well, despite the nerf. Why are you still using Doom Dogs? It feels like you're still performing well, despite the nerf. Why? What is the reason for still playing Doom Dogs? So he feels like he's still performing well, despite the nerf. Why? What is the reason for still playing Doom Dogs? Doompist的可以做一個，啊，就等動物抽套過，啊，你們可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，可能，
比较喜欢的一些休闲活动啊。What, what kind of activities you get up to, or have you been around Taiwan doing much? 저희는그냥하루종일집에만밖에서편도在家里面。I've been staying at home all day to be honest. 就是对我的队上也有韩国选手，那他们跟我说就是 Seven Eleven 卖的那个牛奥良炸。So I've heard from some of my Korean friends that Seven Eleven has some popular stuff for Korean people. 선수있었는데근데그때세븐이면편의점에서약간치킨이한국치킨이랑되게다달랐다고말씀하셨는데근데혹시이번에뭐음식이거나뭐그런거요네약좀인상남은거있으세요라면이되게짜가지고제가짠짠거좋아하거든요대만대만라면이요네他说就是되게짜요他说台湾的那个泡面非常辣，哦，非常非常咸，非常咸。I feel, feel like uh, the ramen instant noodles in Taiwan is really salty, but. 毕竟 OPC 打到现在 ，Ardian 还是全胜的战绩。那我们大家都说这个 Ardian 是这个类似这种邪恶大魔王的感觉哦。那就是以一个这个大魔王的身份，有什么话想要对其他队伍说的 ？Did you have any words as the current top standing team in OPC? Uh, any words for the other teams? 어지금메타는기다리는것보다먼저들어가는게좋기때문에그거대로연습을하면은모든팀이강해질수있을거라생각합니다他说就是说比起等待，然后他觉得就是还是先入为主比较比较比较好，所以他就希望就是其他其他队伍就是现在还有时间可以练习，所以可以继续变强。I feel like uh, this the tournament's not over yet. There's still a lot of time for other teams to improve and to catch up. So I'm hoping for really good competition coming. Yeah, we've got some more questions from Alice. So I'll ask a very simple question. Because at the moment, Adian, Korean team, Korean team's overall strength is the most important thing. Korean's traces are really good. Yeah, Korean's traces are really good. Yeah, Korean's traces are really good. Yeah, Korean's traces are really good. 对，阿迪安玩的是目前是最好的，那当之无愧。所以想要请问一下說，说这样的一个阵型，面对到我们其他 O P C 的队伍，有没有哪个队伍的什么阵型让你们会觉得特别棘手？ You, 如果你们用全次阵的话。Have you feel like uh, have you met or come across uh, any particular good players from the other teams that you want to mention? 아디안테게가장큰뭐뭐상처나뭐그런제일큰영향을주셨는지어떤팀어 A H A 아뭐야 H Q， 就就我这，红空红空艇。他说香港队，香港队，香港队，香港队。香港队。他说 H K 比较 H K 是吗？说红空 attitude。就是留下印象。哦 ，H K 对。红空 attitude has given me some good impressions。어일단거기서블러가그여기서제일빛빛봤던것같아요。他觉得就是他们的那个辅助。So one of the supports. So one of the Hong Kong attitude supports. Either Mango Jai or Sukiyo as one of the best players in Erster's opinion. 好，那我们今天的采访也就差不多告这个段落。那我们这边也非常谢谢 Erster. So there is the post-match interview from Erster. So a lot of insights there in terms of how they're doing the tournament. Some stuff maybe outside the tournament, but otherwise, you know. It seems like they're feeling good about everything in general in terms of the new patch coming out. Again, very simple words. Doesn't really feel the difference. Everything's so yeah. good. Yeah, and I think, uh, yeah, feeling good. Rightfully so. Right. It yeah. shows in the three O. Like, sure, it's against the bottom team in the tournament in terms of the standings. But I mean, I'll say it once. I'll say it again. Every single team is a potential threat. And Artie and Flash Wolves both definitely cannot rest on their laurels, even though there are a couple of wins between them and the rest of the pack. And speaking of rest of the pack, that is not, of course, the only match we have today. No, and they're coming up next is going to be AHQ taking on Flash Wolves. So the Taiwanese rivalry between these two organizations will continue. Last time we saw AHQ losing to Flash Wolves. Does history repeat itself? Do AHQ get their revenge? That all happens right after this break.